Good afternoon. Everyone, if you're here, I'll just sit down and speak. I think, uh, good afternoon. Mm, it's nice to be here. Uh, I thought I will share uh, something uh, very different from the speakers of just before he spoke. Uh, I wanted to show something like uh, what we are used to is uh, connectivity is networking. To me, the networking is something larger than connectivity. And I thought that one of the key elements I just wanted to show it to you and share with you is how the networking has helped in the public domain and the same ideas when it is implemented within an, a company or within an organization, how much it can provide you the productivity. Now, I think this is important, I think, to understand that how much it can multiply in terms of that. I thought I would share some practical example which we have done it internally and expand on what it really means to you. And I hope uh, that's the content of the presentation. So I thought I will start with some simple ideas and they elaborate and go into the type of things that actually we can do in any organization. And uh, I want to share something which we have done it internally. At the end of the session, with some of them, how it is going to go about and what it will really mean to us in the long term. Uh, actually, I carefully avoided the security aspect, and I believe they are far more critical when it is being done. Uh, but I think uh, in this presentation, I just don't want to mix it up with that, and I just don't make an effort. So, of course, see, I think uh, we talk of Web 1.0, 2.0, and now I think people are talking for some time and a, a new generation of Web 3.0. Although there are no strict definitions of what is 1.0 or when the 2.0 came into existence, but we all understand what's the big changes in terms of the features, what it is. One is, of course, uh, the Web 1.0 is more like a passive, somebody creates a content and you use it, while a Web 2.0, you interact and you create content and you can actually mash up many applications to create even more interesting things for yourself. That is why it has revolutionized the ways of working that Web 2.0. The Web 3.0, which is being talked for quite some time, that's the last point of the thing I want to make, that's more on semantics and other things that are critically important for us to make far more significant progress than what we have made. Um, of course, just to complete the picture, uh, if you want to say Web 1.0 and 2.0, this is what it is. Like Encyclopedia Britannica was available to you, today you make a Wikipedia, you a Wikipedia and you create contents and you create edit and you create most of them and you use it. And you can see the impact of this is you are participating and your contents are far quickly made and far widely available to you. And these are all critical. The same things in other contexts like a YouTube and Flickr or different complexities of doing the same thing. And this is what is really making the difference. The other big idea in the case of web is on the crowdsourcing. You know, people who are working in mapping, I have been in the business for the 30 years. I know how difficult to create content. And the crowdsourcing ideas have revolutionized, particularly in the voluntary geographic information systems. There are many examples. Wikimapia is one example. The OpenStreetMap, which has started much later, and you can see the contents and accuracies, which happens globally all over, and Google My Maps. Actually, I, actually, I believe the Wikimapia and OpenStreetMap are really open to do you many more things than Google My Maps, and that's where it's critically important for you. You can add contents far more flexibly in either of them because they're open. And, uh, and if you just see the type of growth in some of them, see, in fact, if you just to see the number of places, it's about 14 million excess, and it's growing. And uh, I just, an open street map, which started much later, and you can see the amount of contents, you know, very often how many locations are known precisely. I think if you see the open street maps, it's a one trillion GPS points are available online for you. These are critical things which is never made into that form. I just give you a simple example of open map. This is actually in the background. This is a yeah, satellite imagery on Delhi. And you could create these contents and you can make a map for yourself instantaneously from a public domain source and create. It's not only that. You can query all contents of that. And that means you can make far more flexible applications on top of it. You see all the streets and all they have come from open street map. And you can locate every piece of information. This is something, if you ask today a map making community, it's an expensive exercise. You ask somebody to create all of this, it's going to cost you a huge money and time. And these are some things which are not available in Delhi, it's available globally. So you have never been there and you can still get all this information. So I am in the geographical, geospatial intelligence business and I can tell you this is such a wealth of information to work on areas which you never had. 
And just to tell you the entries growth, this is the way it has grown in terms of uh, in terms of today, about 14 million number of entries in Wikimap, yeah. And if you look at um, OpenStreetMap, this is up of users. Number of users, about 4 lakh people. And uh, you have got, uh, this is maintained by, I don't know, University College of London. I think that's what it is actually initiated and maintained, this whole thing. And if you just look at the number of GPS points, 2 trillion points, where you know the positions of those places and you can attach it to them. And, uh, and this is how it has grown. You see the exponential form of growth. Uh, in terms of the number of content availability, and these are the ones. This has happened primarily by, by being in a Web 2.0, and you are able to contribute to the whole network and make sure it happens to that. And this sort of crowdsourcing is also practical for some other even formal organizations like USGS. Uh, you know, the USGS wants to put up many seismographs in many areas and even giving it to places like their houses and buildings or schools and private establishments and they will connect through a Wi-Fi and network and update these contents. This makes you far more interesting analysis and availability and strength of information which you never had before. And today also you could put up information like your own intensity of how you feel, qualitative descriptions of any earthquake or like event and you can put it onto this. This all helps you in huge disaster management exercises. Now, I think these are sort of things one could do. In fact, uh, there are something like online tools for rescue that I think effectively used or the Google's Purple Finder and Usha, this crisis map. You know, this came in Africa. They initiated originally when the Kenyan political crisis and military crisis were there to do this. And today it is being used extensively everywhere to make sure it is done. And these are some of the things which allows you, for example, in the Haiti rescue incidents, you can just say how many calls came from where and what was done. All this could be available online and these are the things which makes a very big response mechanisms to be done. Why I'm saying all this is a top of open environment and allowing you to contribute and participate if things really make many applications and many solutions make sense. Just like what my Madhya Pradesh colleague was talking, I think if you don't connect information between one state unit to another state unit and you don't share information and you don't make an effective flow of data and you don't do the purpose of what it was originally intended, you are losing it out. So the highly networking and these things are critical importance and sometimes networking is just not connectivity alone. You need applications and specific fundamental interfaces. So I was just want to highlight a practical example. This is right from my unit, actually. I want to share you some experience. And uh, this is what happens. See, this uh, block diagram is suitable for any, any sensor acquisition and analysis framework. It has nothing to do with one or the other. It could be your fingerprinting, or it could be anything else, or it could be a remote sensing data, or it could be a communication intelligence, or any of these effects. There is a planning and acquisition type of systems which generally acquire and make it data. And you have got a data analysis frameworks and you also have an information system which derives a higher level of uh, uh, information from the data analysis and makes it layers for external use. And also you need an effective monitoring system whether things are happening the way it is intended. And uh, therefore the whole system, this is typically of any system of this kind. And this actually writes on a database and below it's connected to a huge data layer which could be the key element for doing it. So this is the way it is traditionally organized, a multi-layer system to make sure. I meant a heading a true networking. It is not just this connectivity diagram which is going to help you. You need actually applications which will talk to these different stages and within the stages to make you an effective functional proposition. Just to give an example, your planning and acquisition happens autonomously without any reference to your data analysis framework. You are not doing much. In fact, if there is a need for an acquisition and if you see something interesting is happening and you want a more frequent acquisition, you should be able to interface with an acquisition system to ensure this information is acquired and provided to you in more inf intense form. Maybe an information analysis system must be tied with the data analysis and planning and acquisition to make an effective one. So the number of interfaces you make is probably leads to success of doing such a thing. I just